In this video, we're going to look, have a look at how we create interactive worksheets using Google Slides. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create the worksheet itself before we add the interactive elements that we're going to require. So first things first, we'll start with a clean slate. We're going to start with a blank background, but because we are doing it online, we might as well add a little bit of color to it. So let's change the background to something, a, a nice subtle color, like a subtle blue, for example. Now we're going to start adding some of the things. For this example, I'm going to show you how we can create a drag and drop activity where they will have to match the names with certain images. There's going to be a number of other examples as well that we'll show you in an additional video to this one. So first, let's create our boxes that we're going to use for the drag and drop. So for the easiest one to use for this is using a table. We're going to create an, a four by two grid because we're going to try and find four different items. So there I've got my, I've got my table. I'm going to make sure that it's got a white background so that it stands out a little bit. We'll change the borders to be a bit thicker and to be black so that they can clearly make a distinction between the different cells. So now we're going to add the names of the things that we're looking for. So we're going to have look for some for very simple things, a cat, a dog, a mouse, and a cow. Now we just want to make sure this looks a little bit nice nicer so we'll select everything make it nice and center and of course a lot bigger so we're going to add some size to this and because we want to make square boxes there's different ways of doing it but having an in, an enter before and after will essentially get you to that same effect and there we've got our boxes Right, so now we've got our boxes that we that we want. Now we need to make sure that they're nice and big so that there's space to actually drag our images in. So let's just, for completeness sake, make sure it looks like that. So once I have this, this is essentially the activity sheet without the interactive elements. Remember that the, the images that I want to drag are going to be my interactive elements. So what I want to do is I effectively want to make sure that this is flattened so that it will not become editable. Otherwise, when I'm going to use this as a worksheet, then all of this becomes editable and they might end up changing that or moving this around by accident. So we want to flatten this. Now, the easiest way to do that is go file, download as, a, as an image, a JPEG image. So when we download it in something like Google Chrome, the image will be, and you won't see this now, but when you do this on your own computer, the downloads bar opens at the bottom under where my cursor is now, and there will be a file, usually called untitled something, depending on if you've given your activity a name already. So once we have that, now we want to make sure that we remove everything that's on screen. Select everything that is over here, click and drag the box, and just delete. Make sure that it all goes away. Now we want to bring that image back, but as the background. Right click, change background, and choose image. And when we get here, you can use the browse function to go onto your computer and find the image that you're looking for. Alternatively, what's easier is seeing as the file is right here, I'm just going to click and drag it over here and then release. And then it'll upload that file and it'll turn that. It'll make that a background. Now, the nice thing here is I can't edit it anymore. So make sure that before you get to the step, you're happy with what it looks like. Because once you're here, you can't change it and edit it anymore. Now we want to add our interactive elements. I use an add-on called Flat Icon for this. So if you don't have it, it's easy enough to install from add-ons. Go to Get Add-ons. And all that you do here is you type in flat icon one word right flat icon one word and you'll get here and you can click on it and it'll allow you to install it in my case it says uninstall so just make sure that you install it and give it the necessary permissions that it needs it's a great tool because let me show you why it's so useful we're going to go to add-ons icons start so i don't have to go out of my edit my google slides editor to find images Here's a whole bunch of images, and 
it shows you some of the latest images that I've inserted. So I've already done this. I'm just going to take these different images that I have. I'll click on I'll click on the cow, for example. And there I've got it. And I just say insert. I can select the size. I can change it to how big or how small I want it. Right. So now we've inserted the cow. I'm just going to go through the process of inserting all of them now. One thing that is quite useful in Flat Icon to keep in mind is once I've searched for something, it automatically applies a type of filter. So you'll see there's a red dot over there. If I click on this, it'll show me the type of filter that is being applied, special slash flat. In other words, the icons it'll look for are going to be similar to this one. So as an example, I'm still looking for the cat. I'll enter cat and it gives me a number of, of, of different icons that are similar. So I can use the same face icon or I can use a different type of icon. If I were to take this filter away, just to show you quickly, you'll see suddenly it adds a number of different types of icons in there. And this is quite nice because it, it allows you to create something that looks uniform um, across the different images that you're using, that it's the same. So one other thing that I would like to point out about flat icon, you'll see over there is a little crown item. That means it is a paid for resource, so you can't use it for free. Everything else on flat icon is free to use and to incorporate into these tools as long as you're as long as it's not being done for profit. And also make sure that you log in using a, a um, Google account. The reason for this is when you're using a guest account and you're not logged in, you're limited to the number of flat icon images you can insert. So <clears throat> this is just a useful tip. Now, I just like using flat icon because I know that I can quickly and easily find images that I want of a number of different things. And I am also sure of the fact that I don't have to worry about the backgrounds that, are, that might get in the way. So here I've got the a number of images without backgrounds. Now, what happens if I need to find images that are not supported, that, that you can't find on flat icon? Well, you can still use the image, insert image and search the web. If I do that, I still stay in the Chrome browser and I can look for a cat cartoon and it'll find a number of different cartoons. It will often try and find, if I use the term cartoon, it'll try and find images that don't have backgrounds. Again, everything listed when you search, when we use this insert image search function, these are all free to use images that don't require, that don't have royalties and none of them will have watermarks or anything like that. So it's a useful thing to keep in mind. So when you want to insert that, just click on an item or you can just drag it in and drop it and it'll create that image for you. And you'll see there's a different cat that I have created. Now, the activity itself, which I have over here, can now be presented in a class setting by using a number of different tools that we will talk about in a different video when we talk about interactive presentations, how we use interactive presentations in our classrooms. But you can also use this and add it as an assignment on a Google Classroom where learners will automatically create a new copy. But what I also want to show you a very useful little trick that you can do. Right at the top, and again, you won't see this now in the recording, but every, every Google file that we have is essentially a link. So in other words, this file, to give you an idea, the link that I'm using looks like this, right? It's a very long link that I've got. So this I can share with my learners in whatever way in order for them to view the slide. But if you want to make sure that they can make their own copy that they can edit, an important, a very useful little trick that you can keep in mind, and this works for all Google files, is this end part where it says edit. So in other words, this little part of the link here at the back. If I change that, if I actually go and I take that part out and I change it into copy and I share that link with someone, then what I end up with is, an, is a link that will automatically request anyone who opens it to make a copy of the resource. And in that way, they'll be able to have the same clickable slide 
where they can then select the cat, move the cat there, move the dog over there, take the mouse, move it there, and move the cow over there. I hope this is a useful trick that you can use. Please make sure to have a to review some of our other short videos on how to present with interactive presentations, as well as a few more examples where we'll show you how you can some other interesting ideas where you can create worksheets using this type of formula.